most of mathematical truth will escape any individual formalization. Because any individual formalization has a finite number of bits of algorithmic uh, information content, but um, mathematical truth, the, the world of the platonic world of pure math, has an infinite number of bits of, al of algorithmic information. Okay, so what we can know is a sort of speak uh, an infinitesimal part of the truth. Okay, so this is a different way of looking at uh, uh, incompleteness, which makes incompleteness very natural. And I should say also that it makes pure maths look a little bit more like biology, because, um, you know, in theoretical physics, we still hope there's a theory of everything, right? Which would be a simple set of equations that you can write on a t-shirt, which will give you the whole universe if you knew the initial conditions, but they should be simple too, right? Um, but, uh, but in biology, things are very complicated. Uh, uh, the human genome is uh, three times 10 to the nine bases, which is six times 10 to the nine bits. There are no simple equations for a living organism, for an ecology, for your spouse. So, so, so biology is the domain of the complicated, and in fact, um, pure math is even more biological than biology because in pure math, this, this simple argument already shows that pure math has infinite complexity. And biology has very high complexity compared to theory, fundamental theoretical physics, but, the, but, but biology, is, the complexity is only finite. It's large, but it's finite. Here, the complexity is provably infinite. Okay? So there's an even better example of this. Um, just let me mention, uh, I, I have an even better incompleteness theorem than this one. This one is very simple to prove, but there's an even better incompleteness that I have that I'll just tell you about very quickly. Uh, has to do with the halting probability. Turing has this very basic result in 1936 uh, that um, in his famous 1936 paper um, that the halting problem is undecidable. There is no algorithm to decide if a self-contained computer program will go on forever or will eventually stop. If it does stop, you run it and you've discovered stop. But how, how can you uh, be sure that, it, that it'll never stop? And, um, and Turing proves in, in his 1936 paper that there is no algorithm for using Cantor's diagonal argument. He proves there's no algorithm to decide in general given a self-contained computer program, one that doesn't read any input data, whether it's going to go on forever or it's going to stop. And therefore, he deduces there is no mathematical theory, no formal mathematical theory, that can also always enable you to prove whether individual programs halt or not. If there were a mathematical theory that always enabled you to prove whether an individual program halts or not, that would give you an algorithm by running through all possible proofs, just in the way I described already. That would give you a, uh, an algorithm for deciding if an individual program for always deciding if, if an individual, individual program halts or not. And, and, and uh, so this is how Turing deduces incompleteness from something deeper, which is uncomputability, the fact that pure math is full of things that are uncomputable. Well, anyway, um, instead of looking at an individual program and asking whether it goes on forever or halts, um, this is sort of a statistical mechanics approach. I look at the ensemble of all possible programs and ask what is the probability that a program that is uh, picked at random by coin tossing will halt. And you have to be careful how you define those probabilities so that it's legitimate mathematically. But basically, you can make things work so that a k-bit program has probability uh, 1 over 2 to the k. This is this is how you do a probability measure on all possible algorithms. And this was not possible in the 1960s version of algorithmic information theory. Um, this is from the 1970s version of algorithmic information theory. And it was two of us who realized that we really had to change the, wo the, 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 the way you think about programs so that you could use this probability measure. And the two of us were uh, who came up with it independently were Leonid Levin and myself. Uh, and basically it's an idea which I like to call self-delimiting programs, but I don't want to talk about it. It's a, it's a technical point. 
a computer program should indicate within itself how long it is, how many bits it has. So you can read it bit by bit and realize where to stop without seeing a special character at the end saying no more bits. Okay, so this has the property that no extension of a valid program is a valid program, and it has the pro and therefore it implies that if you if you generate each bit of a program by an independent toss of a fair coin, the total probability over all possible programs of any size will be less than or equal to one. If you do things the wrong way, the total probability defined like this over all possible programs will give you infinity, and that's not valid. You want the total probability to be less than or equal to one. And with self-limiting programs, you can get this way of assigning a probability to a program to work. So a k-bit program has probably 1 over 2 to the k. So then you can ask, what is the total probability of all the programs at all? p halts, and that would be 2 to the minus the size in bits of the program p. This is just the probability that a program that's chosen at random by independent tosses of a fair coin will eventually halt. So this is, in other words, instead of looking at an individual program like Turing does and asking whether it halts or not, you sort of have a big bag with all possible computer programs. You shake it, you pick out one at random, and you ask, what is the probability this program will halt? So if all programs halted, the halting probability would be one. If no program halted, it would be zero. And it's actually, it's actually in, in between, since some programs halt and some don't. And if you imagine, this number depends on the programming language you're using. And as I said, it has to be, technically, it has to be a universal Turing machine, and it has to be self-delimiting binary programs. If you do things right, you can imagine writing this number in, in binary. And it turns out that if you, if you could do this, these bits are algorithmically reducible, or they're lawless, they're totally incompressible. They, are, um, they have maximum possible entropy, speaking in uh, physical terms. Uh, they're a perfect simulation within the world of pure mathematics of independent toss of a fair coin. They are necessary truths that look like contingent truths, is another way to put it. Um, um, because each bit is determined, but, but it's a perfect simulation within pure mathematics where all truths are necessary truths of, in of, of independent toss of a fair coin, which are sort of maximum entropy contingent accidental truths. Okay? In other words, each bit is determined, but we can never know. We can't calculate what the bits are. These are the bits of this, writing this number out in binary, if you want to know its numerical value, if you want to know n bits of its numerical value, you need an n bit mathematical theory to be able to, to, to prove the values, to be able to determine the value of the halting probability with n bits of precision, you, you need an n bit mathematical theory or you need to use an n bit program. These are irreducible mathematical facts that you cannot get from to get n bits of the numerical value of this number in binary, you can't get that value out from a program that is smaller than n bits in size, and you can't deduce the values of those bits from a mathematical theory that has fewer than n bits of axioms. It's logically and it's logically and statistic it's logically um, it's logically and algorithmically irreducible information. It cannot be, this information cannot be compressed into a computer program smaller in size than it is or into a mathematical theory with a smaller number of bits of axioms. So, so, so in other words, essentially the only way to prove what these bits are is to add that to your axioms, but, but you can prove anything by adding it to your axioms. So, so this is sort of a worst case where mathematical truth has no structure. In the world of pure mathematics, this is something that looks completely lawless. It looks accidental or contingent, but you know that mathematically these, are, these bits are determined once you tell me what your programming language is, uh, each bit in the platonic world of mathematical ideas you know, is not, it's either zero or one, it's not a superposition state like in quantum mechanics, right? So, uh, but, but, but we can't know because they look like a perfect simulation. In other words, this is a place where, where God plays dice not only in quantum mechanics but in pure mathematics. To, uh, but is the same type of randomness in, in quantum mechanics? Or in no, it's not. This, it's, but it's, but it's, it's very, it's very much analogous. They, the randomness here is this lawlessness in the sense that there is no simpler theory, algorithmic irreducibility. So, so both are intrinsic to the theories. I mean, they are rooted. In, 
in the, into the theory. In quantum mechanics, you have randomness, which is intrinsic to the, to the theory. And here you are saying also in, in the mathematical case. In pure mathematics, in the world of pure mathematics, you have this very simple object, which is the halting probability defined like this. It's just an ensemble version or a probabilistic version of, Hol of Turing's famous 1936 halting problem. And it's a place where mathematical truth looks completely accidental or unstructured or lawless. Well, I, actually, it's, it's true that uh, some of them have been, has been calculated in this. Uh, yeah. Well, you might be able to get a few bits. You might be able to get, it, it's the same as proving elegant programs. Remember, with an n-bit theory, you might be able to prove that a program up, the programs up to n-bits in size are elegant, but not if, if the program you want to prove is elegant has more bits. The same thing is true with an n-bit mathematical theory. You might be able to determine n bits of this numerical value, but not more. So you might be able to get some bits out, some of the bits. But, but, okay. So another way. So yes. The statement, the, 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 the statement is about the, an infinite number of uh, bits. This is an infinite random sequence, algorithmically random, <coughs> which means it's a perfect. It's an individual sequence of bits, which is mathematically well determined once you tell me your programming language subject to certain restrictions that I refer to on the programming language once you pick one of these programming languages 